We got a bike ton to do, and we only got 20 minutes to do it in. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today we're editing an image of uh, one of our awesome uh, employees. His name is Zach, and he's a great photographer. He needs to get rid of some logos on a bike for a product shot. So we're basically, I'm going to strip this bike of a bunch of logos, and I think you guys are going to learn a lot along the way, some really cool techniques. Now, uh, I've never done this at all. This is a first run. I have some ideas on how I'm going to do it, but I've never done this at all. So um, this is like a fresh run of how I would do something and uh, kind of my thought process. So mostly I'm just going to like hit it hardcore, and uh, you guys can kind of like follow along and see what I'm doing and everything like that. Let me just stretch these out so you can see my face in there when we're done. All right, so I'm going to go start, and uh, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, let me know in a comment box below, but um, I'm going to have to go pretty hardcore to get this all done because I have to remove a lot of logos. Okay, first thing we're going to do here, guys, um, we need to identify the logo so I don't forget when I'm in my, in my hustle. I get to be in the hustle zone, and, you know, sometimes it's just... You don't you don't remember everything. So this is a giant Fuji logo. I think that says Fuji 2. That says Fuji there. Um, and then there's something right over there, and it looks like there's a Fuji logo over there. Um, Fuji, good job branding your things. So um, let's just talk about how I plan on doing this. This guy's super easy. You just paint white over that, and that's going to be really easy. This guy's going to be really easy too. All we have to do is make a selection and paint white in there. This is going to be a little bit harder but still relatively easy because it's so dark um this area is going to be there are a couple different ways in which we can uh, try to get this area the main thing is we got to remove these logos but we have to make sure we uh, maintain all the highlights and shadows and the definitions of the bicycles and everything so that's kind of a tough part um so this is going to be like uh number one easy number two getting harder three getting harder four getting even harder and then five is going to be the hardest so i'm going to go ahead and start off with the easiest and work our way to the hardest and uh, show you guys how to do this so this is something you guys might have to do um you know maybe you don't have to remove logos from a bicycle but uh, it might be some kind of other product shoot or just kind of getting rid of things so this will help you in figuring out how to how to just get rid of things that are distracting or unwanted elements all right so i'm just going to grab my regular brush here um choose a flow of about 70 percent uh hold down alter option to sample this color I know it's white, but I'll just sample this. And on a new layer, I'm just going to paint it over there. There we go. That's uh, logo number one, gone. See, told you that would be pretty easy. There we go. Um, this next layer, I'm going to make a new layer for each of these, or maybe a new group. What I'm going to do is choose a uh, lasso tool, and I'm going to hit Shift L and click right over here. There we go. And sorry, I hit Shift L to change between. Like if you're on one lasso tool, you can just hit Shift and switch between them. So now we're now we're using the, the polygonal lasso tool. There we go. And make the selection there, right there, and coming back through. And then we're gonna close out the selection. So in this case, I'm just gonna draw this because we have a selection active. I'm just gonna click that color and then draw inside of there. And uh, that's gonna do what we want to. I'm gonna hit Command H real quick. Um, this is my first time using CS6 on this computer. So it asked me if I wanna hide Photoshop or hide the extras. And I wanna hide the extras. There we go. Now we can see it looks pretty good, but there's a couple of like color uh, differences here. Like, I don't know if you guys can even tell, but this is a little bit darker here than it is over here. So what we're gonna do is my selection's still active, but hitting Command H just hides the selection. So we're gonna grab this color here and uh, paint with about 20% flow and just kind of like bring it in. There we go. Looking good. Now I'm gonna deselect and in this group, I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a blur and that's gonna help areas like that. So we're gonna to go to filter, blur, and then to Gaussian blur, and just choose a really small radius. You want it to be small enough to where like, um, you, you, you can see that it's actually doing what you want. You can see the preview before and the after. See, it's just like, makes it look more normal. There we go. Um, but too large of a blur and you would actually blur out the area where it's covering the letters. So you don't wanna do that. All right, let's set a layer mask here. I haven't done any of my keyboard shortcuts in here, so it's making me go a little bit slower than normal, but um, we're gonna put a layer mask on it, and I'm just gonna layer mask right outside there and right over there. Those small little areas in which um, I can see that I've painted on there. Little details, but uh, you know, I want it to be perfect. There we go. And that's a perfect job masking that out as well. So we've already taken care of two of those. Let's go ahead and group that together. 
The next one I want to do is up here, and I've got a cool idea on what I want to try. Uh, I honestly have no idea whether it's going to work or not, but we're going to try it. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a selection here. Um, there we go, just this guy here. And I'm going to hit on my background layer, Command J. And that's just going to make a layer right over here. Now I'm going to make another selection. There we go, right about there. And I'm going to click on my background layer again and hit Command J on that. So basically I'm just making a couple selections and duplicating them over top of everything. So they are, there we go, bring that up there. They are um, over top of everything now and we had to click on the background layer to make those selections and then duplicate them because there wasn't anything on the blank layers there. Oh, that's what that layer is, I was wondering. Okay, so this layer here is, um, this is probably going to be stretched along this axis. The only thing that we, the issue I have is if I stretch it like this, you can see how it doesn't really stretch along the right axis. It's kind of stretching like up that way, but I don't really want that. I want it to stretch over that way. So you can hold down the command key and grab this little guy and kind of stretch it all the way through. And um, there we go. And hit enter. And you can see how that basically stretched our bike all the way through to the other side of the, the bike, which is perfect. All right, we're gonna try to do the same thing with this guy here. I'm gonna bring this above and see if I can do this just by holding command and clicking and stretching in there. Now, I'm getting a little weirdness right here. Weirdness is the technical term in this case. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna select the area that doesn't have like that little bend in it. And I'm gonna hit shift command I and then hit, hit uh, delete. So it's going to get rid of that. So we just have this area and I'm gonna stretch this area down. Okay, and this is just totally like a guess. I don't know if this is what I wanna do, um, but it's my guess as right now of what I think will wind up working. I'm gonna group the two of those and um, we're gonna make them invisible real quick. Now I'm gonna grab my lasso tool and click right up here. We're still on the polygonal lasso tool, which is perfect for this sort of thing because it's going to draw straight lines. And this is, you know, it's a very um, linear element that we're trying to fix here. It's a, you know, straight bike frame. So straight lines are great in this case. There we go, and I've just selected that out. Now I'm gonna make this visible again. There we go, and with this selection, I'm gonna make this into a layer mask. So I'm gonna click on my layer mask button, and that's basically going to load what I just did with the two stretching of those layers into the layer mask. Okay, so we have a layer mask that defines both of those. Now what I can do is define each of these with their own layer masks. So I'm using the keyboard shortcuts I'm used to. We're gonna define these with their own layer mask. So I'm gonna grab my paint tool, paintbrush tool, and I'm gonna paint it about 10%, there we go, and kind of fade from the top into the bottom here. All right, there we go. So that's kind of just like, it, it should, it matches up at the top. We know that, of course, like it, it does that because it, you know, it is part of the top image, so that's perfect. And it fades down, and this bottom image matches up in the bottom, and then goes and fades up. So I'm gonna add a quick layer mask to this one as well. Keep hitting the wrong keyboard shortcuts. Well, they're the right keyboard shortcuts. I just haven't set them up in Photoshop CS6 just yet. All right, there we go. So we've taken those elements and kind of stretched them through each other. And all we have to do really is go in here and um, you know, if there's a quick, like this little angle change just there, um, we just go in with a really small brush and fix that. There we go, that looks great. Okay, so we've taken care of that logo too, and we've added our own little design change on there too, which just kind of worked out. Um, if you wanna, let's see, I'm gonna polish that up a little bit more. Um, let's just grab our, I'm gonna use the pen tool. I, I'm actually a big fan of the pen tool. A lot of people don't really use it a whole lot just because it, it kind of takes some, I don't know, it, it takes some work, but um, it's really not that hard to use. You just kind of have to practice it with it, you know, for an hour or two and then you'll get it. But it's it just it's one of those tools you need to practice. But it helps you make really nice shapes. And in this case, um, I'm gonna make a shape that's that uh, basically that stripe. And then we're just gonna grab the brush tool and inside of the same shape, sorry, I need to go back to my pen tool. I'm gonna right click, go to make selection. I don't wanna feather the edge of it. And I'm gonna use my brush tool and now get that white. All right, and kind of just paint in there. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna make it look like the, look like the highlight wasn't stretched through there, that this is an actual design that's over top of, of the bike. There we go, so that's pretty cool. So we've gotten rid of that logo as well. Oh, I skipped this one. We're gonna go and do that one. All right, a new layer, and let's see if I can take care of this one 
in a different way. Um, they have some new tools in Photoshop, but we're actually going to talk about next week. Uh, we're going to talk about CS6, all the new tools and whatnot. Um, they, th they have things like content to wear, move, and things like that. I don't even think that's going to work in this case, so I'm not going to try it. But if you did want to try it, um, you, you could use something like that. I'm a traditionalist in this sense. Like I don't really, I don't really use much of the new tools that are in you know the newer releases of Photoshop. Um, the things that I appreciate more are usually like interface options and whatnot. But um, if you guys like them, right on, use them. Okay, I've got this selection here. I'm gonna go to select and then down here to refine edge. And I just wanna blur this just a little bit. There we go, 1.3 and I'll remember that 1.3. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm gonna grab my brush tool and I'm gonna choose this color and just paint right over there. There we go and hit command H. And then grab my darker color and paint. There we go, that looks pretty good. Cool, so I'm just trying to match this up. And the reason I'm using a selection is to kind of like get uh, get an area like, you know, it, it's pretty well figured out. Like that's the only area, if I hit Command H, that just hides my selection. That's the only area it's gonna even let me paint. So I've got a nice linear line here, which is great because it's, it's only allowing me to paint in that area. And I don't even have to worry about making a straight line with my paintbrush. I just like, it does it automatically for me, which is perfect. Now I wanna share this top line but I wanna invert it. So I'm gonna hit Shift Command I to invert the top line of where I actually wanna paint. And so the inverse selection is actually activated now. So I'm gonna grab my lasso tool and here, I don't know if I need to plus or if I need to minus it. Yeah, I think I need to minus my selection out. So I'm going to click here and then go up this way and this way, there we go. No, that's not what I wanna do. I'm trying to restrict it, but I don't remember how. Okay, maybe I minus it from this area. There we go. Yep, minusing it from that area. So now it's only allowing me to paint in between those two. Okay, let's create a new layer and I'm gonna hit Command H. Now remember the bottom side of this is still feathered, that 1.3 pixels, which is perfect because I, you know, I, I want that to be feathered. So I'm painting in here now and it's only gonna allow me to paint in between the two of these, which is great. All right, and it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna need to apply a little bit of a blur on this. So I'm gonna deselect, there we go. And I'm gonna hit the filter. We're gonna go down to blur and over here to Gaussian blur. All right, and that looks pretty good for the most part. Um, there's still this area in the middle and this little area on the top. I could have probably been a little bit cleaner with my selections, but um, we're in a hurry. We're trying to get this done. There we go. It's gonna look great in the end. Don't you worry, guys. Okay, and what I'm doing now is just kind of choosing a color right in the middle there and kind of fading that through there. There we go. That looks pretty good. So that as a base, you can see I'm really just using my brush tool here. This is nothing really that fancy. It's just a brush tool and some selections. There we go, that looks good. And now I'm gonna get a new layer in here and I'm gonna create a selection that's gonna be this highlight. So we're gonna carry our highlight all the way through into there and we're gonna grab our brush tool and I'm gonna grab this lighter color and hit Command H. There we go. And now I'm gonna give this a blur too. So we're gonna to go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. All right, and slightly less of a... There we go. And this is our highlight that basically gets carried into the bike. I'm gonna put a quick layer mask on there <laughs> if I'd use my right buttons. Okay and just paint this away like 10% right there. So it kind of looks like it's a faded away highlight. Now, because we use this area and we all we did was with our uh, brush tool, what I'm gonna do is make a selection around here, sh hit shift backspace, fill it with a 50% gray. Okay, sorry, we gotta do this on a new layer. Okay, I was on my layer mask. Fill it with 50% gray. Now we'll go to filter and we're gonna go to noise and here to add noise. There we go. And what we're gonna do is basically uh, figure out like what the grain looked like. There we go, that looks pretty good. And there we go, this is our grain. So I'm gonna change this now from normal here to soft light. And I'm gonna hit Command U and just lower the saturation of my grain a little bit. There we are, that looks great. Now I'm gonna do something really cool. This guy right here, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna hit apply layer mask, okay? So these four layers, that's my, that's my taking away of that logo, right? I'm gonna hold down Command and click on this layer then I'm gonna hold down Shift and Command, click on this layer, and this one, and this one. 
So these are all the layers that I just painted on. This is everything that I've hand painted. Now this layer, which is my grain, I'm gonna use the selection that I just made and click on there. And this is now, this grain is only visible exactly where I painted. So it's not visible anywhere else. And I'm able to just lower the opacity just a little bit there and do a perfect grain match um, from one area to another, which is perfect. Okay, then we're gonna shift click all those and hit Command G. So we just got rid of that logo as well. Not bad, right? We're on our way. The last one we want to take care of is this logo here. And let's see, how do I want to do this? I haven't ever done this before, guys, so I'm kind of like, I'm feeling it. <laughs> I'm feeling the pressure. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do another cool method for this. Um, I'm going to hit M for my marquee tool, and we're going to make a selection that's right over here. Okay, and I'm going to show you guys a different way to uh, select things out or to stretch things, rather. I'm going to hit Command J on this and then bring that all the way up to the top. Now. If I were to like um, try to stretch this out like this, you can see it's going to get weird. And I want to stretch it just like left or the right. Um, and I don't want to use this method again because I want to show you guys a different way. Although that way might wind up being better. I'm going to rotate it around. So this is about horizontal. Um, I'm going to hit Command R for my rulers and drag down a guide. There we go. So I can see what horizontal really is. Yeah. And it looks like we got pretty close. So I took this section that was at a diagonal and I rotated it. Um, until it's perfect horizontal. And now I can take this and stretch it out this way. If you hold down shift and command, sorry, shift and command, shift and alter option, which one is this? There we go. It'll stretch from both sides. See how it's going faster now? There we go. And we're stretching it out that way. And now you can rotate it around and go back basically to the original way it was rotated. And you stretched it out in in the exact right way, so it's it's going exactly with the grain there. And now we're just going to lower the opacity. I'm just going to make sure that it's um, it, it it's correct in how it's actually rotated around. Okay. And if you're curious, you could just click on this, and you could just drag your rotation up and do some fine adjustments like that. There we go. We're going to hit them. So in other words, I wasn't able to stretch along the exact. Um, like the, the pattern that it was going earlier just because of like the fact that the original bar was rotated. So I rotated it back around, then I stretched it, then I rotated it back around to what it was in the beginning. All right, we're gonna bring the opacity back up to 100, um, put a layer mask on here, and I'm gonna hit Command I for that layer mask. Now I'm just gonna go with a white paintbrush at a fill of about 50% and just paint this in where it needs to be painted in. Look at that, it looks like it goes, looks like that shoelace extends all the way <laughs> to the bike which is very funny to me. It, it doesn't do that, but I'm just being funny right now. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, we have the the pattern pretty much uh, intact, which is exactly what we want. I'm gonna create a new layer under that, and I'm just gonna grab a lasso tool, and here we go. We're gonna click here and click there. And this is, because it's underneath this layer, um, I'm not incredibly concerned with the fact that um, the selection's not perfect. Okay, and here I'm gonna grab this color and we're just gonna start painting in there as well to get rid of our Fuji. Now, if you see anything over top of it, that's just that logo. Okay, and hit Command H to hide this selection. There we go. And you can see this layer mask isn't perfect, so I'm gonna go on that layer mask and just make sure that it's not visible. Um, there we go, in places like, you know, right over top of the other one. Great, now I'm gonna make these two invisible and just kind of see what we're working with. And you can see it gets a little bit darker there. So I'm gonna make a new layer and with my marquee tool again, I'm gonna make a selection and I'm gonna hit G for my gradient tool, grab a really dark color, not a black, but just a really dark color, grab my linear gradient and hit shift and click down. So it just makes a straight linear gradient straight down. So we've got this on a new layer here. And the idea is to get this on the same rotation as the bike itself and there we go that's not too hard we're just going to put that right about there and make this something like a soft light layer there we go and that's going to bring that same um angle let's hit command j to get get a little bit more that's going to bring a little bit of that um you know the the rounding element back into the bike which is cool now i'm going to do the same thing just because i i kind of want to um, I'm gonna hit a mark, grab a marquee tool again, hit G for my gradient tool. We're gonna use this gradient now, and I'm gonna hit D and then X, which gets my default colors. And we're get, just gonna get a highlight like that, right in the middle there. Okay, and then we're gonna stretch this guy around 
and uh, rotate it around rather, not stretch. No stretching going on, anyone. That was a, a misspeak and I'm sorry. There we go. We're going to change that to soft light too. And that's just going to get a little bit of a highlight right there. And I'm just going to lower the opacity on that a little bit. Okay. Let's see if we're missing anything here. Um, I don't think we are. I think it looks great. This should get lowered down quite a bit more. Now we're going to shift click all those layers and I'm going to hit command G on those as well. And what I want to do is just zoom in here and I'm going to grab my lasso tool. Let's just use a regular lasso tool now. Um, shift L a couple times and there we go. We're just going to select out our pants. Now, if you're using a regular lasso tool and you want a straight line, you can hold down alter option and uh, you can actually get a straight line out of your regular lasso tool, which is great. I like it. There we go. Like here, I'll hold down alter option and get a straight line like right up to there. Cool. Now on here, I'm going to click on alter option and click on my layer mask, which is going to make an invert of the layer mask that I just clicked on. Okay, cool. Now all I have to do is on this layer mask, I'll go to filter, blur, and here to Gaussian blur and put a slight Gaussian blur on that layer mask. Just get a little bit of fuzz or whatever on the outside of that. If you want to go in here and edit it um, with your paintbrush, which I would probably do just to get your edge a little bit cooler and you know a little bit more refined. Um, that's not too hard. It won't take you a killer long time. Okay, let's go ahead and see what's going on right up there. We're turning this off and on. I can just go ahead and layer mask this out as well, right up there. So we have a nice transition from real bike to what we just made. And then the same thing we'll just do down here. This won't take long. Create the shift L, there we go. And click right there. Pretend there's some lace right there. All right, there we go. And we've accounted for the other shoe. And on my layer mask, alter option delete will fill with black. So that's just gonna make sure it doesn't get interrupted in the other shoe. All right, and we've completely taken care of that logo as well. If you wanted to do like a little bit of, um, this is not a bad idea. If you wanted to make a selection out of the, out of the leg, you could do this by holding command and clicking or I'll tell you what, why don't we just make a new selection? It really won't take long. All right, we're gonna make a new selection out of this leg. There we go. And hold down alter option to click on there. All right. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just draw a little bit of a shadow here. All right, cool. So we have this as a selection. I'm gonna grab my brush tool and just grab a pretty dark color hold alter option and hit delete to fill with that color. Now you're not gonna see it because it's underneath the leg, but if I drag it to the right a little bit, now you are gonna see it. Although I put it on the wrong layer. So let's create a new layer. There we go, now you will see it. And we'll just change this to multiply. We'll drag that over a little bit, looking pretty good. And now I'm going to go to filter, blur and to Gaussian blur. Give it a little bit of a blur and then we're gonna lower the opacity quite a bit. And this will be like, yeah, there's a little bit of a shadow there. Why not? And we'll put a layer mask on there as well. All right, shift eight, flow of about 80% because I really just want to get rid of it where I don't want it to be visible. That makes sense, right? All right, perfect. And there we go. We have a little bit of shadow from the leg as well. Well guys, we did it. It took about 20 minutes and um, we've gotten rid of every single logo in this image. Um, it was fun, a blast, and that was the very first time I got to do this sort of thing. So if you guys would do something similar to this, let me know. Or if you guys had any questions, I know I went really fast through all of it, um, but we just kind of had to for the time. But I think it was an awesome job and we got rid of it all. Do you want to, Zach, do you want to get rid of the all stars on the shoes, Converse? This is Zach's image. No, we'll leave the all-stars because Zach's an all-star. That's just how we roll. Guys, thanks so much for watching, Florin. I hope you enjoyed this. This is a very practical use of Photoshop and a really cool image to begin to end with. And this is actually for uh, a sock company, if you're curious. Thanks so much, guys. Have a wonderful weekend. Don't forget to pick up the Florin Pro that goes on sale today. We put an octopus on someone's head for you. It's awesome. Really, it is. <laughs> Bye, guys. What brand of bicycle are you on? Ha, <laughs> undefined.